choosing your future. It's a, it's a, it's a, a program that we've created that's designed to put in place for you to work on yourself. A systematic process that changes your mindset. It's possible, it's necessary, it's you, it's hard, it's worth it, it's done. It's six CDs. Repeat after me, please. It's possible. Yeah, see, the easiest thing that I do now is come up on stage and speak to you. That, that's easy. But the most difficult thing that I've ever done, and it took me years to do, was to believe that I can do it. To believe that I could stand up and not be afraid and speak from my heart and think and be able to present to believe that that was possible for me for 14 years I didn't do it Mike Williams said less you can do more than what you're now doing but I didn't believe it I just couldn't see myself doing it I'm saying to you there's some things that you can accomplish that you can't see right now my favorite book says eye has not seen ear has not heard nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you when you're willing to say yes when you're willing to move forward you are you're willing to come back again and again and again in pursuit of your dream life will respond to you You'll discover some things about yourself. Mindset transformation is very important. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't want to think like everybody else. You want uncommon thinking. Here's the other thing. Expand your skill set. This is the age of what the late Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's. Accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. So you have to expand your skill set to stay ahead of technology and cheap labor abroad. When I was a kid, you got on an elevator. I was an elevator boy. What floor, please? We operated elevators manually. So then we're going through creative destruction. Somebody created an elevator that didn't require a person being there employed to close the door and take the people to the designated floor. When I was a kid, girls would say, what do you want to do when you become a, an adult? I want to be an operator, a long distance operator. Years ago, when you made a long distance call, you had to call a long distance operator. Then somebody created technology that you can dial direct. Am I making this up? Anybody remember you used that call a long distance operator? It's called creative destruction. Somebody created technology that we don't have to do that anymore. So today, what multi level marketing does allow you to secure your future, to stay ahead of technology and cheap labor abroad. You can hire a PhD or an MBA in the Philippines or India for $2.60 an hour. So what you're doing is you're staying ahead of the game because we're going through continuously creative destruction. Think about Mr. Washington. Young man, yes sir. What do you want to do with your life? Uh, I, I want to buy my mother home, sir. I want to take care of my mother. You do? Yes, sir. I want to make my mother proud. How can you say you want to make your mother proud and you were in the dean's office the other day for fighting? Sir, they called me DT, the dumb twin. So you're going to fight them? Yes, sir. Why, Brown? Why? Anger is the wind that blows out the lamp of the mind. How do I get even, sir? Tell me. They pick on me all the time because it takes me longer to learn things than others. I'm not like my sister at the University of Miami. I'm not like my brother. They always compare me to him. Mr. Brown, you want to get even? Yes, sir. He said, you have a good memory, young man. Yes, sir, I do. Yes, I do, sir. Remember these words by Frank Sinatra. The best revenge is massive success. become massively successful that's how you become even thank you sir mr. Brown yes sir why did you sign those papers what are you talking about you're the first student in special education that was labeled educable mentally retarded put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade you fail in the eighth grade I fought for you I saw something in you. You've got greatness in you. I know you're not as fast as your brother. 
I know you're not like Margaret Ann, your sister. But there's a hunger in you, sir. And I fought for you to get that, and I saw your name. I couldn't believe it. When you signed it to somebody else, why did you do that? Several teachers met with me and said that you wouldn't be with me at Florida and University to help me. Mr. Washington, they said, if I didn't make the honor roll at Booker T. Washington High School, I would not make it at Florida and M. You've been like a father to me. I never would want to bring embarrassment to your name. Mr. Brown, I, I know it's harder for you. But once you learn something because of your hunger, you got it. You master it. He said, I don't care what they said. But did you believe that you could go there and graduate? To be honest with you, sir. No, sir. Not without you, sir. Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. Listen to me. Yes, sir. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. Whoever recruited you to become involved in their organization, they saw something in you. Whoever asked you to be a part of their team, they saw greatness in you. So you need people in your life who can see things that you can't see. You want to find whoever got you in the business and say to them, thank you. I told Robert Boyd, who recruited me for Best Line Products, thank you, Bob. I don't know what you saw, but I'm not going to disappoint you. You find whoever recruited you because you are looking for eagles in this business. You're not looking for people who need more. You're looking for people who want more. Let us say together, it's possible. Everybody together, it's possible. I can live my dreams. I will work on myself. Every day. I will retrain my thinking. Every day. I will listen to audio programs. I would read 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. I will turn off my television and turn on my life. Let us say together, it's necessary to detoxify your life. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you are serious about reaching your goals? Raise your hands, please. Very good. Listen, it's your time. And, and I want you to go within and I want you to take some notes on some things that I want to share with you. And he, here's one of the things I, I want you to, to realize and, and to come to grips with. I didn't do what I'm doing now for 14 years because I didn't realize that it was my time. Now, you might be saying, well, how do, how do you determine that? The fact that you're here, that you're here to do the greater work. And, and, and what I did was I disqualified myself. I kept myself on the sideline. I was an onlooker as opposed to becoming actively engaged in this thing called life. This is your time. I want you to write this down. Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Remember when Michael Jackson put off years from doing a, a national and international tour? And then he said he's going to put on this last concert. And he said, this is it. Don't forget that. He said, this one that I'm going to do, this is it. I'm going to put all my stuff in it. Don't, some of y'all remember this. He said, this is it. He didn't realize that life is so uncertain. He didn't realize it's so unpredictable. He did not realize that there are no guarantees. Here's a quote I want you to think about. If you put everything off until you're sure of it you'll never get anything done if you put everything off until you're sure of it 
you never get anything done. And so I, I remember thinking about, well, I don't have a college education. Well, I can't compete with people with PhDs and MBAs. I don't have any paper behind my name. Listen, what you have and who you are is enough. Become actively engaged in this thing called life. Seize the moment. I constantly say, look, live like a warrior. And warriors are always in fight mode. And this is, you, this is what you have to do. Because this thing called life, it's challenging. You got to fight for peace of mind. You got to fight to stay away from the refrigerator. You got to fight to stay away from toxic, negative, energy draining people. You've got to fight to stay focused. You've got to fight to put all your efforts and energy into things that's productive, that's positive and purposeful. See, it doesn't take any motivation to, to procrastinate. It doesn't take any motivation to put things off or to think negatively, but it takes motivation to, to be optimistic in spite of, to have a perpetual a vision of yourself and your life in a, in a spirit of optimism in spite of the circumstances and the adversities that's always knocking at the door or peeping through the window. Mm -mm. If you put everything off till everything get right, oh, when I get all my ducks lined up, is that right? <laughs> what, if, what if it's not duck season? <laughs> When I get all my ducks lined up, when uh, when I you know when when Peter stopped robbing, you know one of those things my mother used to say, uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's what my mother used to say, <laughs> robbing Peter to pay Paul. How did she come up with that one? <laughs> Listen, if there's anything that we know now, just with the coronavirus alone, do what you're going to do and do it now with a sense of urgency. And, and here's something else that, that, that I want you to, to look at. And that, that things that I know, I'm 75. And so I know a thing or two. And I remind you of that because I, I'm finding so many of my classmates, the only time that I get calls from them is when someone dies. Now guess what happens when somebody who is, is who's handling the roster for class reunions and 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 activities of, of people that we graduated with you know what happens when you get calls to that effect or get a text you're thinking am i next <laughs> you know tell me send me some information about the ones that are living send me some information about my classmates that are making a difference send me something about my classmates who graduated with me in 1963 from Booker T. Washington High School in Miami, Florida, that's, that's living their dream and taking their lives to the next level, that's creating generational wealth, that's happy and successful, and, 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 and what good things that they're doing in the world, the greater work, so I can emulate that, so I can be encouraged by that. Don't tell me about people that's dying. I, I'll find out sooner or later. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I'm not being insistent. I, I really don't mind that. But I'm saying let's balance it out. Balance it out because all of us going to go. Nobody's figured out how to get out of life alive. Nobody. All of us going to check out of here. People dying today who never died before. You know what? <laughs> Oh, behave, Tyro. You know what? <laughs> so here's something that Shakespeare said. Defer no time. Delays have dangerous ends. Mm, defer no time. Delays have dangerous ends. You think about that. Because I didn't think I can be who I'm now being. I didn't think the life that I've been living that it was available to me. Here's what I know. If you focus on living, if you focus on being actively engaged in life, every day finding some way in which you can make a greater impact, where you can do more, that you can achieve more, the possibilities are unlimited as to what can open up for you. And so I was hungry. How did you get started? I was hungry. 
I was hungry to buy a home for my mother. I was hungry to do something that would give my life a sense of value. I was hungry to be my own boss. I, 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 I realized that the reason at first I used to get angry when they used to fire me saying I had too much mouth and, and uh, that I was just, I was just too upbeat. And so they wanted to check me. They want to put me in my place. Well, I'm not that kind of guy that you can just disrespect me. No, 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 no. This is the place, not a problem. I, I, was, I, I, I was looking for a job and I found this one. No problem. And so, but I noticed that the, the, the things that, that happen, what appears to be happening to you, they're really things that's happening for you. Because had I not been made uncomfortable working for someone, you would not know this Les Brown that you now see. See, sometimes life has to step in and say, you know what? He's just a little learner. Let's step in here. When you don't have enough courage to do what it is that you've been sent here to do, to live the life that you've been chosen out of 400 million sperm, to live, when you don't have enough courage to do that, life moves on you. You were chosen to do the greater work. That's why you're still breathing. That's why you're not taking a dirt nap. That's why you are here to be a blessing. You, 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 we were created by the creator to create. What do you mean by hungry? People that are hungry, they're positive about what they want. People that are hungry, they're persistent. They, they keep coming back again and again and again. They know that you will fail your way to success. People that are hungry are willing to persevere when it appears that, that all the odds are stacked against them. They keep coming on. When everybody has, has counted them out, they, they, as long as they got a pulse, they keep coming back. They keep holding on. They don't give up. They, they, they might bend, but they won't break. Are you hungry? Is there something in your life as you think about your life right now? And I did this self-explanatory style of, of saying to me, Les Brown, come on, you can do this. You can do this. Sometimes you have to talk to yourself. But the other thing is, I asked myself, if I died now, what would I be upset about? Some dream that I had that I put off that I didn't get done. And at that point, I thought about it. I love to travel. I, there are places I wanted to go, things I wanted to see, experiences I wanted to have. And I saw a guy who was speaking and I said, hey, I can do that. The room was as quiet as a graveyard between funerals. <laughs> he, he didn't get any response from the audience at all. I feel so sorry for him. <laughs> I said, hey, I said, dad, this guy's boring. Fortunately, I was seated next to his brother-in-law. Coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. I said, this guy's boring. And he said, the brother-in-law, you ought to be that boring and make the kind of money he made. I said, well, how much money he made? He said, $5,000 an hour. And I said, oh, hmm. I can do that. <laughs> and I mind you, before then, I talked myself out of it. Gary Cox said this. When there's an argument between your mind and your heart, follow your heart. Where your heart is there, your treasure is also. Follow your heart. Most of us have a, a, a mind-driven life. You know, and, and what do you mean by there's eyesight and there's mind sight? See, the mind, that's where your imagination resides. See, when you have eyesight, you just judge according to appearances, but mind sight, you, you look beyond the appearances and you create a vision in your mind of things already accomplished because all dreams happen twice, first in the mind and then in the without, okay? So I want you to, especially now, with this coronavirus thing, especially now, 
with all the other stuff and drama that's going on every day in the world, nationally, globally, and locally, especially now that you, you might be breathing the wrong air seated next to someone or walking and somebody walked past you and you don't know what's going on with them. I got on an elevator at Emory uh, University and, and, and they, they only allow four people on the elevator and this guy had his mask on, I had mine on, and then nobody there but he and I, and then he took his mask off to sneeze. Let me tell you something up in here. I was about to lose my mind with him. I, I, you know what I'm about to say? I was looking at him. You about to make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. <laughs> I know if he could have jumped out of the elevator, he'd have left that soon. <laughs> <laughs> the look I gave you, if you don't put that mask back on, <laughs> I gave him that Mamie Brown look. You know, my mama used to say, you know what? Y'all better not make me come back there. Said, no, ma'am, mama, please don't come back. <laughs> we would bring out the King Kong. <laughs> One of the things I'm doing, this is the beginning of the year, and I want you to listen to me closely. You can't make it by yourself today. There's so many things that's happening, so many things that's changing. And and, 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 and and as you look at where things are right now, let me say something that the news won't tell you. All right, listen to me. God's in, he, he's in all of this. God is in this mix up in here. Do you hear me? He's all over this stuff. They ain't talking about that. They, ain't all, they, should, they should have breaking news. God has interrupted all this mess that's going on up in here. Breaking news, he's still on the throne. Breaking news, all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. That's the breaking news. There will be no commercial breaks. Just this information, all things. Did you say something? No, 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 no. All things, uh, come on. Now, are you really all things? All things work together for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. Hmm. That's some good news up in here. They don't know. No. If it leads, it if it bleeds, it leads. See, if somebody's got to die, got to be an accident, something ugly got to happen to make the news. But the real good news is that all things work together for good for those who love God according to his purpose. Well, what about my adverse circumstances right now? Trust me. It's going to work out. Well, what, what about the fact that I'm I'm about to be foreclosed? Trust me, it's going to work out. What about the fact I'm about I'm facing eviction? What about the fact that I, I've lost my job? Trust me, trust him. It's going to work out. This is not the end. It's just the beginning of a new chapter in your life. It's a new chapter, and as you believe, as you keep the faith. Keep the faith, baby. Adam Clayton Powell knew what he's talking about. Keep the faith. Oh, we, we've gone through some stuff before. Keep the faith, baby. Oh, no. It's it, see, in this place where we are, it's easy to have faith when you got money, you got your health, and, and things are working out fine for you. Oh, it's, it's so fine. You can easily say, oh, just think positive and be enthusiastic and everything will work out all right. No, no, no. You're going to get some weapons in this thing called life. Mm-mm. You got. You have to keep the faith, this because this stuff is cyclic. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go well, sometimes they don't go so well. And no guts, no glory. It takes guts to continue to believe, to trust, to stand strong, to stand up inside yourself. It takes guts to do that to come back again and again and again. It takes guts to look at things that you put all your effort and all your money and all your energy into, and, and then you have, have life interrupt you and you lose everything except your life. People say, I lost everything. I want to just tap on the television and say, no, 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 no. You didn't lose everything. No, 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 no. You have life. You're still here. You're still breathing. You still got a pulse. And who you are behind your eyes is still here. And that force, that energy, that presence behind your eyes can produce what it is that you've lost. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been bankrupt. You're not a loser. Things just did not happen the way you wanted them to happen. 
You're a winner. You were born to win. You came here winning. So whatever you want to do, do it now. And if you're going through some stuff right now, keep it moving, baby. Keep it moving. No, 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 no. I'm depressed right now. No, you don't have the luxury of being depressed. Keep it moving. Use your mind to be creative and, and look for a way to get out of the situation where you are. You will work your way back to where you were and beyond there. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor. Yes. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. Those are not just words that were printed on a page. Those are words that are to become actualized in your life. And I'm putting together groups, mastermind groups of greatness. People see in order to make it the three things that's major right now. Number one, working on your mind. So when you go to a hungry to speak, Dot com, you're going to get some things that you listen to called choosing your future that as you listen to this message over and over and over again, it's going to change your life overnight. There are people listening to me right now. I want you to put on the screen what difference those messages have made in your life. Put them up there so people can see them. Put them up there right now. Do it right now. If you've heard choosing your future, it's possible. It's necessary. It's you. It's hard. It's worth it. It's done. Stick a fork in it. It's done. Yes, stick a fork in it. You know, there's some people can tell you that will tell you. Do you see anything yet, Mike? John Leslie? Yeah. They're putting it up there? Yeah. Let me tell you something. It, it will make you get your hustle on. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't, don't listen to it at night. You won't be able to go to sleep. You'd be so motivated to be talking in your sleep. Listen, and 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 it, who, <laughs> thank you. Who said that? Hey, Kent. Hey, brother Kent. How are you? All right, Kent. Oh man, listen up to me, because you survived. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? You made it out of 2020. Whoa! Don't miss that. Don't miss that. A lot of folk didn't make it. A lot of people didn't make it. Don't take it for granted that you're supposed to make it. To just have a, a spirit of humility and say, thank you, Lord. A lot of people are parting. I wasn't parting. I said, thank you, Lord. I'm still here. Uh, cancer Citizens of America um, amazed me. He's, he's dealing with four-stage cancer, but he's still here. He's been here for 29 years with this in the hear about with some pain that's in his shoulders and his back and but he's still here he's 75 he don't look it but he's still here he says he used mascara to cover his gray but he's still here Ooh, in fact i i see some great kind of rebellion right now i need to hook them up what is this i got to, i don't know what's happening up here what's, what's what y'all doing there i don't hope they don't play that what y'all doing what you, you did i tell y'all get the Excuse me, about to make me lose my religion. <laughs> if people don't leave home without the American Express, I don't leave home without my mascara. <laughs> oh, behave. Oh, whatever. You make me randy, baby. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Because I'm here. Are you crazy? Uh, the stuff I deal with, I mean, stuff I'm dealing with right now. I'm still here when I get through. But see, when I speak, I don't hurt. But when I get through speaking, like I'm talking to y'all, the pain is in in my room. Said, uh, are you through? Uh, I, well, I don't know. I think I've got a little bit more to say. You, you know, as long as you're speaking, you got a job. We ain't gonna mess with you. But uh, <laughs> well, when you get through. We're going we to light you up. Let me tell you what happened. This is a true story. I was the program director at WVKL radio station, right? So this news director I hired, I'm not going to tell you his name. He went to sleep in the newsroom. So I'm sitting up there waiting for him to come in at 10 o'clock to do the news. This time that you can rip and tear and read the news off the Associated Press. I'm sitting waiting, got an uh, instrumental playing and and he, he was in the room sleep. So people came and said, he's in the room sleep. He's not coming now. I put on a, roll, a long record and I had everybody go watch. And I put a note in his hand. 
while he was asleep. But the note read, as long as you sleep, you got a job. When you wake up, you are fired. <laughs> What does it take to make it not less? Mental resolve, all right? Next thing is, you have to upgrade your skill set. And we teach you how to do that, how to make money in a variety of ways. The other thing is, and I cannot emphasize this enough, getting around the right people. That's why I'm, I'm putting this greatness mastermind together, being around the right people. Sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know and what they know about you and, and being able to have the ability to communicate with people behind doors that you want to get into and have relationships with people that's on the path of where you are going. Being around the right people, that's major. Do you hear me? That's major. Don't downplay that. Don't try and do this stuff solo by yourself because it's too many people that's working against you and don't want to see you make it. If there's nothing else we know, one out of every two people you know that you see every day, they got it out for you. <laughs> and me too. <laughs> Why? It's just that way. It's just that's what it is. But we will find a way to win together. All things work together for good. For those, not just one person, for those where two or three are gathered, who I will be among you. Whoa, we're not by ourselves? No, absolutely not. Oh, no. Mm, that's some good news. Let me tell you, one of the most profound statements I enjoyed hearing him say, rob the cemetery of your gifts, of your dreams, of your talents of your art, of your book, of your leadership. Rob the cemetery. Don't take that stuff with you to the grave. God didn't choose you out of 400 million people to, to, to just come here, pay bills, die, and take that stuff with you. No, no. You are here for a purpose, to make the world a better place, to do the greater work. So you gotta get an attitude. Because in order to, to live your dreams, you've got to be focused, clear what you want, and you got to take action. I was clear. This is what I'm going to do to take care of my mother. This is how I'm going to generate the money to do this. I knew working a job wouldn't do, do it, wouldn't get it. 95% of people who filed bankruptcy last year did so because of medical expenses. So I, I, I wanted to do something that was me, and I'm encouraging you to, to, you to do the same thing. Do something that's you, something that you enjoy, something that excites you when you think about it. When I get up in the morning, I say all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. And Lord, whatever I face today, together you and I can handle it. And then I start smiling and say, I'm going to motivate some people today up in here, up in here. I'm, I'm going to be calling out the hungry ones. <laughs> I'm coming for you. If you're hungry, I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why? I enjoy being around hungry people. They are, they are so creative. They're relentless. They just won't take know for an answer. There's a guy that's been pursuing me. He said, Mr. Butterball, I texted him back. This is Les Brown. He said, you are my Mr. Butterball. I want you to know I'm hungry. And every time you look around, I'm going to be there looking at you. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's 
evasive action. But I could have waited and said, well, oh, let, let, me, let me find some things that I can do to get the money so that I can fly. No, uh, George Washington Carver said, do what you can where you are and what you have and never be satisfied. And he was right. If I couldn't afford to do it, I couldn't afford not to do it. I couldn't afford not to invest in myself and tell people you need to invest in yourself. I could not afford to tell people, oh, you need to do something that's beyond your comfort zone and, and you'll discover a part of yourself that you don't know right now if I wasn't will, willing to be a make it happen person. I'm going to teach people how to make it happen and I wasn't making it happen. And I did it. I made it happen. I, I, <laughs> I did a little fundraising. I had beard whist parties and <laughs> oh my goodness, I had card game parties. I, I mean, when I think about it, I saw some of my mama's sweet potato pie. <laughs> I was selling those, I mean, and I would tell people what I wanted to do. They say, here, last year, I have a friend named Madeline Haddock. And, and, and when I went back to Miami, she's the first person that contributed to my my efforts to my dream of what i wanted to do the impact that i wanted to make madeline haddock i talked to her the other day and we're still friends after all these years i i called i said what what made you do that you didn't know me she said i just felt that you had something and I decided to invest in you. See, when you make the commitment to do something, don't worry about it. Oh, I don't have the money. Don't worry. Somebody, if you're committed and you do what you're supposed to do, you do what you are called to do, somebody will invest in you. Mary McLeod Bethune was on Daytona Beach and singing with some kids, including her kids. She she was directing them. She was raising funds for for the college that she envisioned for African Americans during that time because we didn't have a college. And somebody heard her and said, tell me about this school you want to build. And, and she took him out to the Daytona city dump where the city fathers gave her this dump for $3 to build her college, Bethune Cookman College. But it wasn't there yet. It was just in her mind. And this man walked out there in the middle of the night and both of them being stung by mosquitoes. And, and she said, over here will be the dormitory. And, and over here, this will be the, where the van will be. And over here, this, this will be the academic, the academic buildings. And when she finished, and this man became one of her donors, that man who saw her and shared her vision, and she spoke very well. That man was Mr. Singer of Singer Sewing Machines. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Millennials never heard of Singer Sewing Machines, but he was a very wealthy man. And so this is the, 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 what you have to do, is do what you can do with what you have, and always find ways in which you can improve on that because you don't know who's watching you. I made the commitment that I was going to do it and I did it. Now here, here's something else. This is key. This is key. Look at the people that you communicate with most, family members and friends. Look around at the people in your life, people who call you the most, people that you talk to the most. And if they don't inspire you, and they're in your inner circle, you have created a cage for yourself. What do you mean by that? You earn within two to $3,000 of your closest friends. You wanna have an inner circle of people that when you look at them, you are inspired. When you look at them, you get fired up, okay? But if, if you are, are surrounded by, by people that's on your level or below, you're restricting yourself. People rub off on you. Sidney Poitier, please come forward. I love his book, The Measure of a Man. He said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens. Either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? I can't say that enough. Whose pace 
have you adjusted to? You survived the coronavirus? And you're still here? 400,000 people gone? You are here. You've been chosen to do the greater work. And so get some help. If you know how to do it, you would have done it by now. And get some help from somebody that's accomplished, somebody that's achievement-driven, someone that inspires you. When I saw Mike Williams, he wrote the book, The Road to Your Best Stuff. The Road to Your Best Stuff, get it. I wrote the forward for it. I was inspired by him. I wanted to have him around me. And, 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 and so I hired him as my news director when I was at WVKL radio station in Columbus, Ohio. So I can be around him. And he talked to me between records and, and changed my mindset of seeing myself entertaining people. I was hungry. <laughs> Bad baby, they call me Les Brown, the bad of our town. Hello, <laughs> he said, Brown, between records, you can do more than that. Brownie, that microphone you got, it can be used to just entertain people. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can educate people too. I said, I can, yeah, about things that's going on in the community. In fact, you have a responsibility to do that, man. People listen to you. Whoa, that relationship inspired me to go from just being a disc jockey to being a commentator, to becoming a community activist, to running for the Ohio legislature. See, you want relationships that inspire you. you. You you become a part of our community, you will become inspired. You won't settle for being a, a, an average person. If, and if anybody didn't tell you, average is over. Did you get the memo? Hello, average is over. Hello, average is over. Yes. People who don't know that average is over, they have skinny children. <laughs> no! You have greatness in you, and you want to be in an environment that, that inspires that greatness, that brings it out, that challenges you, that introduces you to a, a part of yourself that you don't know right now. You can't see the picture when you're in the frame. You're not listening to me by accident, this is a God moment. Everything I'm saying, you already know it. It's already in you. It's common sense, but not common practice. And, and what Corona has done is serve notice. Hey, you're gonna leave here one day. Nobody's figured out how to get out of life alive. Live life while you can, manifesting your greatness in all the dimensions of your life. Yeah, I, that's how to go out. This is the time for self-awareness. This is the time saying, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee. Talk to me. There's something I'm supposed to do. If you are struggling and going through a tough time right now, say, look, you didn't bring me through this period where we are just to be stuck. I need you to deliver some angels to help liberate me. I need some insight. I need a revelation. I need you to talk to me. I'm quiet. I'm getting still. Speak to me. See, uh, th this is the time. But most people, most people are so caught up in the distractions. Y you want to be productive. Keep thine eyes single. You, you want to be actively engaged to doing something great with your life. That's, that's where we are. This space here. The fact that you're not a, a number of, of, of those people, and, and my heart goes out to them and their, their families, of that 400,000 that's out of here, you are still here to help some people. I've been dealing with fourth stage cancer for years. I'm helping people who are struggling with cancer to let them know it's not a death sentence. Doctors determine the diagnosis, God determines the prognosis. And so when they see me still actively engaged, I'm still here for people my age that's in their 70s 
and say, whoa, this guy is still active. This guy is still living and, and doing things and making a difference and, and, and building a legacy and living a life that will outlive him. Engage with his children and not calling them for car gas money. Or okay, can you all let me hold a little something, something? He's still making an impact, living a life that will outlive him. And so you say, wait a minute, I want to do something too. I got some stuff in me. I've got some ideas in me. I've got some inventions in me. And you do, bring them out, bring them out. This, you, you have to, sometimes you have to grab yourself in the collar and say, come on, get serious. That Michael Jackson was right. You got to look at that man or that woman in the mirror and say, hey, get serious. You've been seriously not serious. You've been wasting valuable time. Get serious. Take control of yourself. You don't have the luxury of being reckless or, or procrastinating or putting things off or being intimidated by fear or, or being depressed. Come, come on, snap out of it. You got work to do, the greater work. Yes, you do. That's why you're listening to me. The ones who don't have the greater work, they're watching Mike Tyson and different people he used to beat up all the time. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's stimulating. Or those who are waiting for a stimulus check, $600? Twenty-six hundred dollars if they had two thousand dollars to it. Is that stimulating? Is it stimulating? And the money's already spent. Hmm. Wow. Don't take much of you, huh? Twenty-six hundred dollars. My bills will say. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do you? You have any more jokes? You leave Did you sit us to cover your bills? To, to cover, you got 10 children, yes. Why? Would the Lord say, be fruitful and multiply? Okay. How many grandchildren you got? 15? You got 15 grandchildren? Yes, sir. Mm. And um, got any great grandchildren? Yeah. How many you got? I got four great grandsons. Hmm. George Bernard Shaw said we should establish a tribunal where people would have to come once a year to give some justification why they should be allowed to live for another year. Let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Why should you be allowed to live for another year? What, what's going to be different? Uh, do you have liabilities or are you building a legacy? What, what's going to be different? If you're allowed to live for another year. Hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. You're 75. What's, what, 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 what's going to be different? You got all these. You got any bills? Yeah. If you die right now, will people have to do a GoFundMe to bury you? Yeah. Speak up. Yeah. Okay. Why should you be allowed to live another year? Oh. Uh, I love the Lord. Oh, <laughs> you love the Lord. Whoa, what a revelation. Hmm. Yep, you didn't make the cut. See you, wouldn't want to be you. <laughs> He's on today. He's on today. He's on fire. <laughs> And this one over here ain't doing nothing. I don't understand. <laughs> this thing, called, you know, we're not supposed to question God, but he said in all that getting, get, in, get some understanding. Well, Lord, I'm not questioning you, but I just want to get some understanding. 
<laughs> oh, behave. Hello? This thing, this, this, called, <laughs> this thing called life? Woo. There's a book I encourage you to get called The Road to Your Best Stuff. I wrote the forward for it. My mentor, Mike oh, Williams, he saw this Les Brown. This is before I life. saw him, The Road to Your Best Stuff. He said, Brownie, if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. See, all of us are born the same way, dumb, naked, and speechless. Don't be intimidated because of these guys who have PhDs and MBAs or more money than you. Don't worry about that. It's not what you don't have, it's what you think you need that keeps you from becoming successful. You think you need four-color brochures. You think you need investors. No, what you need is the belief in you. You are the money. You, you've got to believe in you, Brownie. And he was right. From that day when I accepted that I, I could do this. The easiest thing I've done is to earn millions of dollars doing what I love to do. The most difficult thing that I've ever done that took years for me to do was to believe that I could do it. That me, Les Brown, Mamie Brown's baby boy, that I have the ability to do it. Speaking over 51 countries, and I don't say this to impress you, but to impress upon you what's in you. Speaking before 80,000 people and being able to hold that audience. I don't say this to impress you, but to impress upon you that there's some stuff in you, there's abilities and talents in you that when you stretch yourself, when you're willing to reach for it, when you are ready to go to that next level because you got to that point within yourself where you said, looking around where you are, I've had it. I've had it, I'm not going out like this, no. And some of you are there right now that you know there's more, you know it. You can feel in your heart of hearts. You know it. And you're ready for the breakthrough. Let us say together, it's my time. It's my winning season. Let's say it together. Together, please, with power, feeling, and conviction. It's my winning season. It's my time. I'm ready to live a bigger life. Yes, it's your time. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. It's your time. It's your winning season. It's for your, it's time for your breakthrough. Things are gonna happen for you because you got it like that. Let us say together, it's possible. It's, possible. it's, necessary. it's necessary. It's me. It's, me. it's, hard. it's hard. It's worth it. It's worth it. A friend of mine, he was going across Europe, sleep on train at different points soldiers would board the train and ask who are you where have you been and where are you going those three questions and so I ask you who are you God asked Adam Adam where are you and who are you where are you in your life when you look in the mirror do you see the person you thought you would be at this point in your life where have you been what brought you here why, why did you show up same information same marketing with some entertainers you have people around the block but you you didn't come here to be entertained you you came here to be reminded of what you already know so, where are you going? I want you to think about that. And wherever you're going, I want you to see it in your mind's eye, complete it, see it. See it. See it in your mind's eye. Give you all your eyes can see. See it, accomplished. And experience what it's like. And say, Thanks. If you're facing a challenge, see yourself on the other side and say, I got through it. Thank you. I'm still here. Thank you. I got my right mind. Thank you. I got heart. I got spirit. Thank you. 
I'm still standing. See it. And Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. What drives you? What keeps you going? Lewis Howe asked me the question. What, what's your reason? I, I have some new reasons. Mama has since made her transition. I want to make the mother proud. I've got children. I've got grandchildren. I've got four great-grandsons. I want to make a mark. I want to make a difference. My daughter, Ona, called me one day, and she said, Daddy, what are you doing? I said, I'm at my desk. She said, oh, there's a police officer in the middle of the road, and traffic stopped, and they're waiting for a funeral to come by. Then all of a sudden, she said, whoa, wow. I said, what's wrong? She said, oh my God. I said, was there an accident? She said, no. A hearse came by and there was only one car behind it. She said, when I go, I want there to be a long procession of cars. When I go, I want because of the impact I made on people's lives that the cemetery would be packed with people to celebrate that I came this way. How many of you would like to have a greater impact? Raise your hands, please. Yes, and, and so let us say together, live full, die empty. One night when I was comforting myself, I had 238 radiation seed implants. And, and my PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen, had risen to 2,400. And cancer, they said it metastasized to seven areas of my body. And I was reading Dr. Howard Thurman, who wrote, Deep is the Hunger, the voice of the genuine, the centering moment. He said, the ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them as they cross over. He said, but imagine, if you will, being around your deathbed. People, ghosts, looking at you, saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life and now we must die with you forever miles monroe great preacher out of bahamas said the wealthiest place on the planet it's not in the far east where there's oil in the ground it's not in africa where the diamond mines he said the wealthiest place on the planet is a cemetery books that were never written Potential never realized, gifts, talents, skills, art, music, the world never heard. Repeat after me, please. Live full. Live full. Die, empty. die empty. See, the question comes: if you died today, what dreams, what inventions, what I help me with a microphone, please. Come on, this is not an ever-ready battery. It's tired. <laughs> Help a brother out up in here, up in here. Thank you, sir. Anything for you. Thank you, Grasshopper. <laughs> Y'all remember Kung Fu? Y'all got that there? Grasshopper? Oh, I'm sorry. The Millenniums, they don't know about that. That was when television was television. You understand what I'm talking about? All right.